This is a JavaScript function that generates the nth Fibonacci number using recursion as well as memoization. So we're going to go through it and see what the computer actually does behind the scenes. So the first thing it does is declare this data structure, which is an empty JavaScript object called memo. And that's where the memoization is going to happen later. Then it defines the fib function. And finally, it calls the fib function with the input value of 5. So the first thing that happens is that we're in the fib function with n of 5. This first condition is false because n is not 0 and it's not 1. The second condition is false because 5 is not in the memo data structure, which is completely empty. And this third condition is where we're going to go into. <laughs> well, it's not really a condition, is it? So we go into this else block, and it wants to calculate what Fibonacci 5 is by calling fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. So what it first does is call fib of n minus 1. So that's going to be fib of 4. So immediately calls that, and now we're in the fib function with n equals 4. This is false. This is false. So we're here again, and this time, it wants to calculate the result of fib3 plus fib2. So it first calls fib3, and we're in fib for n equals 3. This is false. This is false. And now we're going to calculate fib3 as being fib2 plus fib1. It immediately calls fib2. So we're in fib for n equals 2. This is false. This is false. And it's going to calculate fib2 as being fib1 plus fib0. So it immediately calls fib1. And now finally, this is true. So it's going to return n, which is 1 again. And it'll end up going back to the fib function when n was 2, because now it's got the result of that first fib call. So now it needs to call fib0 and get that result. So we're in fib for n equals 0. Now that first condition is true again. So it's going to return n, which is 0 and come back to when fib was 2, when n was 2. And now it has a result. So now it can update the memo object with the result for n of 2. And we can see indeed that the object updates over there. And then it returns the result for fib 2. All right, so now we're back up to fib 3. And fib 3, we've called fib 2, so now it wants to call fib 1. So we're back in when n equals 1. It once again returns 1. And now it knows what fib 3 is. It's got a result of 2. It can update the memo structure with that result and return it. So now we're back in when n was 4. And it already calculated fib 3, so now it needs to call fib 2. And this time, when it calls fib 2 and n equals 2, it finds that n is indeed in the memo data structure. So it can return the value for n equals 2 from that structure. So it's going to get that result of 1, and it doesn't have to do the recursive calculation. So now we're back with n equals 4, and now we know what fib 4 is. It's 3. We can update the memo and return. Now finally, we're back up to when n is 5 in the fib function. It's called fib4, and then it just needs to call fib3. So we see it's false, but then here, 3 is in the memo structure, so it can return the value in the memo structure, which is 2, and go back up here. Now it knows that fib of 5 is 5, and it can update the memo structure with that result and return it. Whew. And now the whole memoized recursive function is done.